One of the things about Pokemon Legends Arceus that just really makes it such a special game is the fact that it takes place in the past, and more specifically within the past of the Sinnoh region. Getting to see a region that we already know and love within a past setting before it even really became what we ultimately know it to be is such a cool concept, and a big part of that is obviously getting to see all of the iconic locations within this region in their original state before they are the way they are in the modern Diamond and Pearl and Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. And that's why I thought it would be cool to go over every location within Pokemon Diamond and Pearl and the remakes and see if we can't pinpoint where exactly all of these iconic Sinnoh locations would eventually come to be located within the Hisui region of Legends Arceus. The thing that's going to make this so much fun, though, is that a lot of it is left up to interpretation. Hisui is not a one-to-one -one recreation of Sinnoh by any means, and obviously there are a lot of differences in this time period to the way that Sinnoh ultimately is in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. So there is going to be some guesstimation and things like that, and not everything is going to line up perfectly, but nevertheless, I feel like I've got a pretty good idea on where most of the Sinnoh locations are within the Hisui region that we get to play in in Legends Arceus. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just dive right into it. Okay, so we are about to get into some awesome Legends Arceus content, but I did want to take about two seconds to shout out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify as well as other music streaming services, because they are a huge reason why I'm even able to do this at all. Other than watching my videos right here on YouTube, listening to my Pokemon remixes on Spotify and other streaming services is the biggest way to support the channel and the continuation of videos just like this. And it's also insanely easy, because it's literally just listening to Pokemon music, which I know we all love to do. It really makes all of the difference in the world, it is so, so appreciated, and it helps me to continue to make better and better content for you guys. So if you are able to, consider checking out my Pokemon remixes on Spotify, Apple Music, or wherever you get your music. And if you already are, thank you so, so much. With that said though, let's get onto the video. So we're going to start things off with the cities and towns of the Sinnoh region, and in this department we obviously have to begin where you begin your Sinnoh adventure, and that would be in Twinleaf Town. The location of what will ultimately become Twinleaf Town lies within the Obsidian Fieldlands, which is very fittingly the first area of the game in Legends Arceus. We can narrow down a pretty precise location thanks to the presence of Lake Verity, which is also obviously another location from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. There's also another area next to Lake Verity known as the Sand Gem Flats, and obviously with this getting its name from Sand Gem Town and Sand Gem Town being right next to Twinleaf, we can pretty much say that the future site of Twinleaf Town is somewhere in this general area, and in particular I believe it is right here, within the southernmost portion of the flats right next to the coast. This would be because not only is Twinleaf Town in the southern part of Sinnoh and right next to the coast just like this area is, but this particular spot also has some visual similarities as well, as just outside of this patch of grass you've got some trails that go to both the left and the right, and you've got a rocky ridge right in front of you, which bears some similarity to the area of Route 201 that's just outside of Twinleaf Town, and given that it's not exactly going to be one to one anyway because it's a very different setting in general, I gotta say this is most likely our best bet as to where the future site of Twinleaf Town probably is. Next we have Sand Gem Town, and as I already mentioned, this general area that we're currently looking at is known as the Sand Gem Flats, so obviously Sand Gem Town would have eventually been founded around this area. And since we've roughly approximated where Twinleaf Town is, and we know exactly where Lake Verity is, I believe this would put the future site of Sand Gem Town somewhere around here. 
It's close to those sandy beaches where it gets its name, but it's also a little more up on the mainland too, and this particular area that I'm showing now approximates pretty well to where Sand Gem is in relation to Lake Verity and Twinleaf Town in the modern day Diamond and Pearl games, so I think this is a pretty close bet. Moving on from Sand Gem Town, we next come to Jubilife City, and this one is an obvious one because it is Jubilife Village where Jubilife City will eventually grow and flourish into the biggest city in the Sinnoh region. It is worth mentioning though that a lot of people have started to get the idea that Jubilife Village could eventually become Canalave City instead, because it is closer to where Canalave City is on the Hisui region map. And even though I don't necessarily dislike this idea because before we knew this was known as Jubilife Village, I was actually predicting that this was going to be an early version of Canalave, this is actually factually incorrect because it does say on the official Pokemon Legends website that Jubilife Village eventually becomes Jubilife City. So it is canon, it is official, and therefore we don't really have anything else to say about it, but it's still pretty cool. This next one isn't as exact though, and that would be Oraburg City. However, even though it's not exact, we do have a pretty good indicator once again of where Oraburg City is eventually going to be built within the Hisui region, and that would be thanks to the Oraburo Tunnel, which is within the Obsidian Filled Lands, just like the future areas of Twinleaf and Sandgem Town. In fact, the Ouroboro Tunnel is most likely the Ouroburg Gate, because both are cave areas and both are connected in name to Ouroburg City, so there's one more location from the modern games right there that we can pinpoint in Legends Arceus. And that makes figuring out Ouroburg City's location much easier because we obviously know it's on the other side of the Ouroboro Tunnel. The question is, which side? I ultimately determined that the south exit would be the better way to go here, because it kind of just seems a little more well suited for a city like Ouroburg. And what's interesting is that this area opens up into the Heartwood, which is the area where you can find Cleavor, who is Scyther's evolution. And Scyther evolves into Cleavor with the use of the Black Argonite, which is a kind of precious stone, which also kind of falls in line with the fact that Ouroburg Mine is right next to Ouroburg City as well, and the Black Argonite is certainly a kind of stone worth mining for. Another one that is a really easy one because we essentially get to see the beginning of this town's history is Floaroma Town. The site of what would become Floaroma Town is the Floaro Gardens within the Obsidian Field Lands. We know this because the name of the area is Floaro Gardens, so it's kind of obvious, but also this is where the Shaman event takes place, and as we all know, Shaman is directly tied to the origin of Floaroma Town itself, and how it got all its flowers, and we see Shaman in this event blessing this area with with flowers, effectively meaning that this is the origin point of Floaroma Town itself, and therefore the Floaro Gardens is indeed the area where Floaroma Town will one day be founded. Next up is Eterna City, and this one is also fairly easy to pinpoint as well, because the site of Eterna City would lie within the Coronet Highlands in the area of the Sacred Plaza and Celestica Ruins. And we can say this primarily due to the Dialga and Palkia statues that lie within the Sacred Ruins themselves. This obviously would connect to the Dialga Palkia combo statue that is within Eterna City, and given that this area is consistent with the area of Sinnoh that Eterna City is in, I think it's safe to say that this is a pretty close estimate. Heart Home City is a little more interesting, however, because I also believe the site of Heart Home City lies within the Coronet Highlands, specifically on the site of the Highlands Camp. However, it could also extend into the Meyerlands Camp from the Crimson Meyerlands, since these two locations are so close to one another, and because they're both consistent with where Heart Home City is located. 
I do think the Highlands Camp area is more consistent though, and it's also interesting that the most likely area for Har Home City is on the site of a base camp, because this actually happens with some other towns and cities too that we'll talk about later on, and it's just an interesting idea that some of the cities within Sinnoh were originally founded as base camps. That just adds another really cool wrinkle to this whole idea, I think. Speaking of the Crimson Mirelands though, Salacion Town is definitely located within this area because we also have the Salacion Ruins within the Mirelands as well, and those are obviously the same location as the ones from Diamond and Pearl. And therefore, that would put Salacion Town right next to them within the Golden Lowlands area. In particular, I believe Salacion Town would have been formed right about here, because not only is it in good proximity to Salacion Ruins, but there's also some structural ruins already in this location, and I think that provides a good starting point for an actual town to be built, which essentially means that one day Salacion Town would pop up right around this area. Another obvious city to be found within the Crimson Mirelands is Pastoria City, because with the swampy nature of this area, it obviously screams Pastoria City and also the Great Marsh. I personally believe that the Great Marsh would eventually be founded on the site of the Scarlet Bog, simply because not only is the area roughly consistent within the Greater Sinnoh region, but also this is the most swampy area within the Crimson Mirelands, and so I think it would make sense for it to eventually evolve into the Great Marsh. And that would mean that Pastoria City would be located just south of this area, and there also is a location just south of the Scarlet Bog that is consistent in both appearance and location to Pastoria City, and that would be the Bog Bound Camp. This is another example of a base camp eventually becoming an actual city in all likelihood, and I think this is the most likely location not only because of the proximity to what is probably the Great Marsh's location, but also because the general area looks consistent in terms of its landscape to Pastoria City as well. Next up, we move out of the Crimson Mirelands and into the Cobalt Coastlands with Veilstone City. There is a location within the coastlands known as Veilstone Cape, which makes it pretty easy for us to pinpoint where Veilstone City would eventually be founded. This area in general is pretty different to how it is in the modern Sinnoh region, but like I said, we already knew going into this it wasn't going to be exactly one-to-one, -one, and it obviously has the same name as Veilstone City does, and it is in general in the same location within the entire region as Veilstone City is, so for all intents and purposes, we can pretty much surmise that Veilstone City was founded on top of or along the Veilstone Cape. Celestic Town is also another interesting one from around this area of the region because the most likely place for what would become Celestic Town is the Ancient Retreat. Not only is it extremely consistent in terms of its location on the map, but we know Celestic Town is the oldest town in Sinnoh, and we know the Ancient Retreat is heavily tied to the Celestica people, with Kagita, who lives there, being an ancestor, or descendant rather, of those people who are the original founders of the whole region and were there long before anyone else in the game was there. So with all of this connection to the oldest, most longest lasting people in the region, and with the Ancient Retreat being in the same area as Celestic Town, I think this one is another pretty safe assumption. Moving along to Canalave City, this one is actually an interesting one, and it's also a bit sad, because we already established that Jubilife Village, although it seems like it could be Canalave City, is definitively not Canalave City, because it's the future site of Jubilife City. So that means that Canalave City would have had to have been founded in some other location. 
And I personally believe that it is within a part of the map that we unfortunately don't get to go to, because just above Jubilee Village and just to the side of the Coronet Highlands, there is actually an area of the map that is a pretty good chunk of it that we don't actually get to explore at all, because it's not included in any one of the actual explorable areas. And this to me seems to be the most likely location for Canalave City because it's also in the most consistent area in comparison to Canalave itself within this game. It's unfortunate that we don't get to see this area, but its exclusion might actually also be tied to the exclusion of another area, which could actually be featured later on in Possible DLC, and we'll get to that a little bit later. Going back to the coastlands really quick, Sunny Shore City is also another city that would be located in this area as well, and just like some of the other cities we've previously talked about, I believe the future site of Sunny Shore City lies within the coastlands base camp. Once again, it follows that idea that some of the base camps eventually became actual cities, which is extremely consistent for those other locations, and for Sunny Shore City, it's also consistent too, because it lies right on the southern eastern coast of the Sinnoh, or rather Hisui region, which is also true for Sunny Shore City as well, so once again, I think this is a pretty close approximation. The last of the cities and towns in Sinnoh we have to talk about is Snowpoint City, and this is one that is pretty easy to nail down, because in this area we also have two other locations, namely Lake Acuity and the Snowpoint Temple, that are literally the exact same as they are in the Diamond and Pearl games. So, because we know both of these two locations are the exact same as their modern counterparts, and we know that Snowpoint City pretty much lies smack smack dab between the two of them, and because in Legends Arceus, the temple and the lake are in basically the same location as they are in Diamond and Pearl, we can assume that Snowpoint City would sit right between the two of these within Legends Arceus as well, in this approximate location. I really love the idea that these rural locations that we're seeing in Legends Arceus are essentially going to be the site of all of these cities and towns that we first explored so many years ago, and since this one is so approximate, thanks to the Snowpoint Temple and Lake Acuity, it's a really cool thought to imagine. Next, we're going to get into some of the other prominent locations within the Sinnoh region that aren't cities and towns, and we're going to start with the Pokemon League. If the Pokemon League were to be within the world of Legends Arceus in the Hisui region, it would definitely have to be within the Cobalt Coastlands, just as Sunny Shore City is. However, there isn't actually a location within Legends Arceus that appears on the map that's consistent with the Pokemon League. As we determined that Sunny Shore City would most likely be within the coastlands area, then the Pokemon League would have to be just off of the coast, just like the Pokemon League is to the modern day Sunny Shore City. However, there is no such location like this in relation to the coastlands camp or anywhere in the general area for the Cobalt Coastlands, so it just seems to be the case that this area unfortunately wasn't included. Since the Battle Zone and Fire Spit Island is right next to here, however, it could be the case that this plot of land was formed later on after the events of Legends Arceus due to the fact that Fire Spit Island is the site of an active volcano. And speaking of the Battle Zone, what would become the Battle Zone is obviously Fire Spit Island. It's an island of its own off of the mainland of Sinnoh slash Hisui. It's got a giant volcano on it, which is obviously Stark Mountain. It's just plain to see that this is obviously what would become the Battle Zone. However, given that Fire Spit Island is mostly just the volcano, it's also the case that, similar to the Pokemon League, that the volcano could have expanded the island eventually, and that is ultimately what would create the greater battle zone as we know it in Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. 
Next up, we have the lakes of the Sinnoh region, because you can't talk about Sinnoh or Hisui without talking about the lakes. And these are all the exact same, both in name and location, to how they are in the Sinnoh region. We already mentioned Lake Verity and Lake Acuity, but Lake Valor is also present as well. It is within the Crimson Mirelands, and it is what allowed us to ultimately determine some of the other locations within this general area as well. Like, for instance, the Hotel Grand Lake. This is a location within Sinnoh that sits on the Valor Lakefront, and due to the presence of Lake Valor, we know that this location would sit right next to Lake Valor within Legends Arceus as well. And I believe I have determined where this location would most likely be within Legends Arceus, and that would be on the Boulder Roll Slope within the Crimson Mirelands. This is because not only does it sit right next to Lake Valor, but it has a very layered landscape to it, which is consistent with how the Hotel Grand Lake is as well. I also thought that the Diamond Settlement, given its proximity to Lake Valor, could also potentially be the future site of Hotel Grand Lake, but the thought of a resort area being built on top of an indigenous tribe's former home seemed a little bit too shady for me to want to consider. Plus, I genuinely do think that the Boldero Slope area is more consistent geographically. Another location that's really easy to pinpoint is Romanus Park, because there's a location within the game directly named after it, and that would be Romanus Island in the Obsidian Fieldlands. Not only does it have the name connection, but it's located approximately within the same area that Romanus Park is within the Sinnoh region, so we can pretty much say that this is where the Romanus Park, and also the Pal Park if you're talking about the original games, would one day be founded. Next, we're going to wrap back around to that idea involving Cantilave City that I mentioned earlier, because Iron Island is also another location within this game that simply is just not present. However, there is a very suspicious looking cloud on the in-game map of the Hisui region that lies exactly where Iron Island is located, and so I believe that Iron Island could potentially be covered by this cloud, and it could potentially be revealed in a possible DLC expansion for the game. The location is perfect, that cloud is extremely suspicious like I said, and Iron Island in general is just a perfect type of location to include in a possible expansion for this game, so I could legitimately see that as a possibility. The area where Canalave City most likely is also opening up in that scenario is unlikely though, because I think if that were to happen and we were able to travel to Iron Island, that it would probably happen from the Prelude Beach just outside of Jubilife Village. So consider that my official prediction for possible DLC within this game. And once again, similar to Canalave City, I believe that the Eterna Forest is also, unfortunately, in a spot on the map that we just can't go to. I believe that it's probably within the same general area that I hypothesized Canalave City to be in, because this is a pretty good chunk of land that we simply just can't go to because it's not included in any one of the other areas. And this area of the region is also consistent with where Eterna Forest is located. Furthermore, the only location within the entire game that's even remotely consistent to what Eterna Forest is would be the Heartwood within the Obsidian Fieldlands, but this location is way, way too south for it to actually be the Eterna Forest itself, so I think it's more likely that the Eterna Forest is in fact located in this inaccessible area. On a more positive note, however, one location that we can approximate and go to, and it's a pretty cool one in particular, is the Cycling Road. The Cycling Road obviously doesn't exist within Legends Arceus because it hasn't been built yet, but we can definitely see the actual site where it would eventually be built. And this would be within the Coronet Highlands, connecting the areas of Heavenward Lookout and the Wayward Wood. 
These two locations sit on either side of a lower valley-like area, providing the perfect place for the cycling road bridge to be built. And we can also say with certainty that this is indeed the location where it would be built, because within this lower valley-like location is also the Wayward Cave, which we know the cycling road to be built directly above. And with Wayward Cave obviously being the same one as the one from Diamond and Pearl, and both of these locations being in close proximity to the estimated site of Heart Home City that we talked about earlier, it also just adds that much more certainty to our guesstimation about where Heart Home City could be located as well, which is just really, really cool. And traveling from the Coronet Highlands back to the Cobalt Coastlands once again, we actually have a trio of locations that are all exactly the same to how they are in the modern Diamond and Pearl games, and that would be the Spring Path, the Sendoff Spring, and the Turn Back Cave, which all appear with the same names and in the same location in Legends Arceus. And wrapping back around once again and going back to the Coronet Highlands, we also have another pair of locations that, just like the Sendoff Spring Turnback Cave area, are the exact same as they are from Diamond and Pearl, and that would be Mount Coronet, as well as the Temple of Sinnoh, which, through the events of the game, becomes the Spear Pillar. A couple other legendary locations would include the Hall of Origin, which exists within the same place in Legends Arceus above the Spear Pillar, and is also where you battle Arceus just like in Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, or at least that's where that was going to happen before that event was cut. And the other one is the Flower Paradise, which is where you find Shaman in the Gen 4 games. Now, this is another one of those locations that simply just does not exist within the world of Legends Arceus. Not only because there's simply no landmass or landmark that resembles it in the game in any way, but also because you find Shaman in a completely different location. So the Flower Paradise is a place that just simply wasn't included in this game. These two locations are actually ones that I forgot to mention within the initial recording of this video though, so if there are any other locations that I forgot, be sure to let me know in the comments below as well as where you think they could be located within Legends Arceus. And last but not least, the final major location from Sinnoh that we have to talk about in this video would be New Moon and Full Moon Island, the locations of Darkrai and Cresselia. These islands unfortunately do not appear within the game, either as an accessible location or as some kind of arbitrary type of decoration that we can see on the map. They're just not present in any way whatsoever, and I unfortunately don't think they're going to be, because you can catch both Darkrai and Cresselia in the game already through other methods, and therefore there's really no other reason why these islands would need to appear. So whether we get DLC for Legends or not, I unfortunately don't think these two islands will be included. And there we have it. That was every significant location from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl that we can locate in Pokemon Legends Arceus. Of course though, these are all just guesstimations, so let me know what you think about my guesstimations in the comments below and if you have anything else to add. Also, be sure to leave the video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more new Pokemon content all the time because it does really help out. With that said, I will be back with another video very soon, so until then, as always, thank you guys for watching this one, I love you very much, and I will smell you guys later.